Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, I have an advanced algebra question. Now, this is not like uh, college level advanced mathematics, but uh, this would be at the, like, say, college algebra, algebra two pre calculus level. So if you're in any math course after, let's say, a first year algebra course, then you should be able to answer this question. But let's go ahead and take a look at the question. So we have this polynomial function. Okay, so of course, uh, you can see that right here. And the question is, what are the possible rational roots? Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm gonna explain all of this in just one second. But I wanna give you guys out there that are taking this level of mathematics a full opportunity to answer this question. So if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one second. And then we're going to talk about something tremendously important uh, about polynomials and something that you absolutely need to know at this level of mathematics. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let me show you the answer, and then, of course, I'm going to start explaining this. So if you're a little bit lost, just hold on one second. Uh, I'll be able to clear up, hopefully, uh, most of your questions out there. But let's answer the question, what are the possible rational roots for this function? Well, the answer is the following. So it's this big set right here. So we have a set of numbers, and those num uh, numbers are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8, plus or minus 16, and plus or minus uh, 1 half. Okay, now, of course, if you have these same numbers but not in this particular order, that is perfectly fine. But this is the set of possible rational roots for that particular function. Now, some of you out there might be, like, totally uh, lost. You might be thinking, hmm, I have no idea what you're talking about. If that's your situation, just hold on. But if you figure this out, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know exactly how to determine the possible rational roots of a particular uh, polynomial function. Uh, probably most of your friends and family will look like this. They'll be like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but if I ever need a math tutor, I'll hire you. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. So what are we talking about? Well, we are talking about polynomial functions. And polynomials are uh, a huge, huge, huge topic in mathematics, and you need to know a lot about them. Now, one of the things I'm going to be talking about in this, uh, uh, for this particular problem is, you can see down here, I'll talk about it a little bit more in a second, something called the rational root theorem. But there are other theorems you need to know about polynomials. So again, at these uh, uh, levels of mathematics, algebra 2, college algebra, pre-calculus, you need to know a lot, a lot, a lot about polynomials. Now, if you uh, need help right now with the course you're taking, uh, I would certainly suggest checking out like my algebra 2. I have a college algebra course. Probably for most of you out there, if you really want the full kind of... Um, you know, all the theorems, all the different type of techniques you need to understand to solve polynomial equations, really just kind of go straight to my pre-calculus course because I cover everything in that course totally. All right, so one thing that we have to understand about polynomial functions is the following. So look at our problem here. So we have f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus x squared minus 32x plus 16. Well, we have this fancy thing called the fundamental theorem of algebra. What does that say? Well, basically the fundamental theorem of algebra more or less states that when you have a polynomial function, that the degree of that polynomial, okay, which is the highest power. So you can see our polynomial here is written from highest to lowest power. So three is the degree. Okay, so the degree is, of course, the highest power of a polynomial when it's written in standard form, which is highest to lowest power. So the fundamental theorem algebra effectively states that the degree okay, of a polynomial okay, is how many roots or solutions you will have for that polynomial. So for this particular polynomial, it's a th uh, third degree polynomial. So we will have three solutions for this polynomial. 
Okay, now what type of solutions will we have? Well, that is a whole nother kind of um, ball game here. So uh, when it comes to the type of solutions you can have, uh, you can let me go actually go up here for a second. Okay, we'll erase our little happy faces and sad faces and focus on learning some math here real quick. Okay, so now we have this third degree polynomial here, right? So we know that the degree is three, so there's going to be three solutions. So the question was, what type of solutions? Well, this is where it gets really interesting. You can have real number solutions. You can have complex or imaginary, some, uh, imaginary number solutions. You can have a combination of these. Um, you can have all imaginary. You can have all real. And uh, along those lines, you could have irrational numbers, things like the square root of seven. That's an irrational number as a possible roots because that is a subset of the real numbers. But you could also have what we call rational numbers. Okay, rational numbers, this is that set Q, but effectively these are fractions that we can make out of integers. Any number that we can express as a fraction of integers, things like three over four, or maybe like the number five, right? Because that's five over one. These type of numbers are rational uh, numbers. And what we have, uh, in advanced algebra, okay, again, uh, one of these theorems, really awesome theorems um, in, about polynomials is something called the rational root theorem, okay? So what is the rational root theorem? Well, effectively, the rational root theorem is a way for us to list out the possible rational roots. So let's go back over here to our answer. So here is our answer, okay? So this is a list of uh, rational numbers, okay? Now, here's the deal. This particular polynomial that we are looking at here, okay, this one right here, our question, may or may not have rational roots as a solution. It, it could and it could not, but if it does have rational uh, numbers as a solution, it will be one of these numbers right here, okay? So that's what the rational root uh, theorem does, and that is the nature of this question. So let's go back to the original question. It says, what are the possible okay, rational roots? Well, again, there's no guarantee that, in fact, this thing does have rational roots, but if it does have rational roots, rational solutions, it will be amongst these numbers right here. Okay, so we need to understand, be very clear on what this set of numbers means and represents and kind of put that in context of um, you know, our larger understanding of polynomial functions, et cetera, et cetera. Now, there's other things you can do to kind of narrow this down, and I don't want to get into it in this particular video, but there's other very important things and other uh, very important skills that you need to understand that are related to solving um, a kind of higher degree polynomial equations. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and continue on with the rational root theorem. Okay, so the rational root theorem will generate a list of numbers uh, such that um, any rational roots that this particular function has will be amongst those numbers. So how do we do this? Well, first step is we need to make sure our polynomial is in standard form, highest to lowest power. Okay, so you can see here, x cubed, x squared, x, and then our number. Now what we're going to do is identify the leading coefficient, which is 2. It's a number in front of that highest power. So we're going to um, label that as Q. Okay, We're just going to label that as Q. And then we'll take our constant number here and uh, we'll label that as 16. Or this, it's actually 16. We'll label that as P. Okay, so this is, I'm not really formally uh, defining the rational root theorem, kind of as you would see on a math textbook. I'm kind of explaining it to you, and you know, effectively you're going to be able to do these problems once you get done watching this little video. All right, so this is Q and this is P. So the uh, list of possible rational roots uh, we can find by finding the factors of P, which of course is uh, 16, okay? And we're going to divide that by the factors of Q, which, of course, is 2. Okay, so now, uh, actually, how we do this is kind of the next step, all right? So the factors of P over the factors of Q. So it's the factors of the last number, when we have this thing written in standard form, over the factors of the leading coefficient. So here, that will be um, 
the result of all the factors of this number and all the factors of this number, uh, once we combine and we do this division of all these various factors, that list is our possible rational root. So let's go ahead and take a look at actually how to do this. All right, so here is 16 over 2. Now, what you want to get in the habit of is just putting plus and minus. So let me kind of go back over here and take 16, for example. Now, 1 is always going to be, obviously, a factor of any number. So here we have 1 times 16 is a positive 16, and negative 1 times negative 16 is a positive 16. So already... What are factors of uh, 16? Well, positive negative 1 and a positive negative 16. So you just kind of pretty much kind of put your brain on automatic, if you will, and just be like, okay, it's always going to be positive and negative 1 with these numbers. So let's focus on 16. And the way you want to do this is start with the factor of 1 and just start increasing, you know, um, kind of going through your, your mind. What is the next largest factor? What's the next largest factor? All the way up until you reach that number 16, which, of course, 16 will be a factor in and of itself. Okay, so uh, factors of 16, plus or minus 1. 2 is a factor of 16, right? 2 times 8, so that's plus or minus 2. 4, 4 times 4 is a factor of 16, so plus or minus 4. 8 times 2, of course, is a factor of 16, so 8 is a factor. So we'll uh, put plus or minus 8. And then after 8, what's the next factor? Well, the only remaining factor is 16, so that would be plus or minus 16. Okay, so again, a lot of students get a little confused on how to do this. Hopefully that makes sense. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing with 2. What's factors of 2? Well, it'd be plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. Okay, so now that we have all of our factors listed out in the numerator and denominator, what we have to do now is very carefully... Uh, build a final list of um, those rational roots, possible rational roots. So the way I like to do this is just to take our first denominator. Okay, so it's plus or minus 1, and I'm just going to start dividing by this number right here. Okay, we'll divide through all these numbers. So we'll take 1. Actually, let's do it this way. Okay, so take your just kind of start with one denominator first. So plus or minus 1 by, uh, divided by plus or minus 1, because we're talking about division here, right? So now we have to have all the various combinations or the various um, uh, uh, results of doing this number divided by this number, this number divided by this number, et cetera, et cetera, right? So let's go ahead and start now. So plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 1 will give us a plus or minus 1. Okay, now let's move scoot over. Plus or minus 2 divided by plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. Plus or minus 4 divided by plus or minus 1, plus or minus 4. You kind of see the idea here. This uh, plus or minus 8 divided by plus or minus 1 plus or minus 8, and then plus or minus 16 divided by plus or minus 1 is plus or minus 16. Now, we're out of numbers here, right? So what we're going to do, we're out of numbers in terms of we uh, divided by all of our numerators here, so we'll scoot this over to our next denominator. So that's going to be 2. Okay, so plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 2 is going to be plus or minus 1 half. All right, so now let's scoot over. Plus or minus 2 divided by plus or minus 2 is what? Well, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so we're right back to plus or minus 1. So we don't need to write that again because we, we already have that. So plus or minus 4 divided by plus or minus 2 is 2, so you can see we have that. Uh, 8 divided by 2 is 4, we have that. And then 16 divided by 2 is 8, and we have that. Okay, so at this stage, we now have all the possible rational roots for this particular polynomial function, meaning that um, one of these, okay, uh, one or three of these could be the solutions for this polynomial equation. Now, how could you test that? Well, you could just take a number. Let's take positive one here real quick and plug this in and see. Let me see if I can do this math here real quick. We'll take a positive one. All right, let me kind of... Uh, uh, put a nice little yellow there so we can see what's going on. And let's just test this to see if this one works because now we're looking for solutions, right? So let's see what happens. And uh, we're kind of doing this in real time. Now, what would be the actual way you would do this um, like in those courses that I was talking about? Well, you would do this using synthetic division. Now, you could, you know, just plug in numbers and check. 
So let's go ahead and continue to check here. One cubed is one times one times one times one. Times one. <laughs> Try to say that three times fast, right? Is one, so that's two, so that's gonna be two, minus one squared, which of course is one, minus, uh, let's see here, 32 times one, yeah, it's gonna be 32 plus 16. All right, so it doesn't look like this is gonna work out, right? So this right here is gonna be one minus 32 plus 16. Let me just make sure I'm not making an error here. So two minus one, that is one, minus 32. So this is going to be what, a negative 31 plus 16. No way that we're gonna end up with a zero. That's the main idea here. So that positive one right here, we could just, you know, we can test these as possible solutions. That doesn't work, all right? So positive one, we can kind of just throw that out, okay? Now you can, what you wanna do is continue to test all these rational uh, roots, possible rational roots, and see if you uh, find one. Now, this kind of what I'm getting into now is more more the advanced things you need to know, like synthetic division. Um, uh, there's other uh, theorems as well, Descartes rules, rules, Descartes rules of signs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's other techniques uh, to include graphing. This gets it's a big topic here, but if you walk away. You know, at least having this basic understanding of what the fundamental theorem of algebra is, uh, what the rational root theorem is, well, that's very, very good. Again, if you need help with this stuff, uh, you know, I do teach this at, you know, in my Algebra 2 course, my college algebra courses, and my pre-calculus course. If you want the full kind of depth of how to solve advanced polynomial uh, or higher degree polynomial equations, check out my pre-calculus course. But if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.